Pursuant to notice one, I call up HR 1709, the Tri Tribal Firearms Access Act for the purpose of markup and move that the committee report it favorably to the House. The clerk will report the bill. HR 1709 to allow members- Without of objection, the bill will be considered as read and open for amendment at any time. The chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Wyoming, Ms. Hageman, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. H.R. 17-1709, the Tribal Firearms Access Act, is a simple and straightforward bill that allows members of federally recognized Indian tribes to use their valid identification documents issued by tribal governments to obtain a firearm from a federally licensed dealer. This bipartisan bill <clears throat> was introduced by our friend from South Dakota, Representative Dusty Johnson, and is co-sponsored by a number of members with tribes and reservations in their districts. The right to keep and bear arms secured by the Second Amendment is important to the day-to-day -day lives of many Native Americans, particularly those who reside in rural areas. However, under current law, federal firearms licensees, or FFLs, are required to verify the identity of firearms purchases through examination of a valid identification document, which is defined in another section of the code. That definition does not include identification documents issued by federally recognized tribes, although tribal identification documents can be used for many other purposes. For instance, tribal identification documents are accepted by the Transportation Security Administration, or TSA, to pass through TSA checkpoints. In Washington State, they can be used to verify the age of a person purchasing alcohol or cannabis. And in Wisconsin, they can be used for the purpose of purchasing alcohol and tobacco, selling or recycling non-ferrous scrap metal, transactions with pawnbrokers and jewelers, obtaining prescription medicines, and even voting. Tribal IDs may be the only forms of identification many Americans possess. Nearly one in five Native Americans have little to no internet access to get another form of ID online. Moreover, the nearest division of motor vehicles office may be hundreds of miles away. These Americans should not be denied their Second Amendment rights because of lack of access to another form of identification. This bipartisan bill ensures that law-abiding Native Americans may exercise their Second Amendment rights. I urge my colleagues to support this bill, and I yield back. <clears throat> The gentlelady yields back, and I now recognize the ranking member, Mr. Nadler from New York, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the goal of this legislation is a reasonable one, to ensure that identification documents issued by tribal governments are accepted as a valid form of identification when purchasing a firearm. But there is more than one way to achieve this goal through legislation. Indeed, the bill's sponsor, Representative Dusty Johnson, introduced this bill last Congress with the text with text that added tribal governments in one part of the law. This Congress, he introduced the bill with the same title and the same purpose, but added tribal governments in a different part of the law. Both versions would allow someone to use a tribal ID to buy a firearm, but only the earlier version would extend the inclusion of tribal IDs and tribal governments to other areas of the law, such as making sure tribal documents are included in the federal definitions of identity theft and fraud involving IDs. I was pleased that our colleagues are open to further discussion on this important matter when we raise this issue with them. I understand that our Republican colleagues will be working with us to amend the bill as it proceeds to the floor so that we can achieve a bipartisan outcome. With this understanding, we will examine the full implications of this important drafting distinction and solicit input from tribal governments and the people they represent. It is our hope that we can reach an agreement that includes tribal government, tribal IDs, tribal governments, and Native Americans in a more expansive way than just allowing tribal IDs for gun purchases. Such an agreement would serve to correct the broader injustice of failing to include tribal governments in more provisions of the law and would prevent tribes from having to seek recognition of one law or one right at a time. I thank Chairman Jordan and his staff for their responsiveness and willingness to collaborate on this bill. With the understanding that there will be continued efforts to improve the bill, I will vote to advance this legislation today and I urge my colleagues to do the same. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back without objection. All other opening statements will be included in the record. And briefly, I would just note that the majority and minority staff have been discussing this bill. I understand that there is bipartisan interest in this bill and making sure that everyone is com comfortable with the substance. After the bill is favorably reported today, we commit to working with the minority as it goes to the floor to accomplish math. 
The chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Wyoming for the purpose of offering an amendment in the nature of a substitute. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to HR 170. Without objection, the amendment in the nature of a substitute will be considered as read and shall be considered base tax for the purpose of the amendment. The chair recognizes the gentlelady from Wyoming to explain the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment in the nature of a substitute makes a small but important change. It makes it clear that the tribal identification must have a photograph of the individual. I urge my colleagues to support it, and I yield back. The gentlelady yields back. Who seeks recognition? Seeing none, the question is on the adoption of the amendment in the nature of a substitute. This will be followed immediately by a vote on reporting the bill. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment in the nature of a substitute is adopted. A reporting quorum being present, the question is, is unfavorably reporting the bill as amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it and the bill is ordered to be reported favorably to the House. Members will have two days to submit views. Without objection, the bill will be reported as a single amendment in the nature of a substitute incorporating all adopted amendments and staff is authorized to make technical and conforming changes.